Well, that was a crap show, guys. Let's get into it. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Stephen Hyatt, Gate City Sports Channel. Sports Channel, where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Overreaction Monday. I don't feel any better after 24 hours, guys. I don't know about you. I still don't feel good about the result of this game. Hard to put, without the All-22 guys, I can only make a few assumptions based upon broadcast, you know, angles and views, which is highly flawed, guys, so I, I try to reserve judgment on certain things until I can, say, I can see that. But I do want to start off with one aspect here. I want to start off with the fact that when I looked at the run-to-pass ratio, I don't think the ratio was the issue. I don't. You know, we still were, we still ran the ball more than we threw the ball. We still gained over, you know, 200 yards on 30, over 30 attempts. Like, the ratio was fine. I think the thing that I question, and I'm probably going to look into as, as I get a chance to see the All-22 in the middle of the week, is I really want to see the situation, the scenario, and the defenses that were presented to us and what we were trying to do as a coaching staff. Because sometimes it's easy to say, and this is how I feel in the moment, guys, that it felt like we went away from something for a duration of time, like the running game, and, and got a little too heavy with the pass for this duration of time, then we kind of went back towards the run for a little while. But without really seeing those things, it's it's a feeling, and it's it's not necessarily based upon the facts of like what was going on from the matchup. So I need to see that before I can make definitive statements. On the surface, no problem with the run-to-pass ratio. In terms of moments in the game, I did feel like there were times where maybe we got a little too... You know, we just kept trying to go back to that, and Jalen was struggling, and it just felt like we just... Can't, like, like trying to push him through and break it through. On saying that, I want to talk about Jalen Hurts for a second. I'm not making any kind of definitive statement here, guys, about Jalen Hurts. I've already said that I'm waiting till the end of the season. This young man deserves the opportunity to get through an entire season and to be evaluated. Right now, this team is 5-7. and seven. He's a pretty good part of why they're 5-7, and seven, both the good and the bad. Okay? It's a team sport, guys. You lose as a team, you win as a team. It's just the way it is. We know that. His performance was bad, guys. I will say that this is arguably, along with the Dallas game this year and the Dallas game last year, this is pretty bad. <laughs> this is up there with those two games. And I don't know, but I have a gut feeling here, guys. I have an instinct, if you will, that during those Friday meetings with Shane, or I'm sorry, with Nick Sirianni, and then the subsequent meetings on the sideline with Brian Johnson, and then with Shane Steichen's guidance as well, I felt like Jalen Hurts might have been told to be more decisive in the pocket. Because you guys remember, there's a lot of complaints about how long he was processing these deeper throws and not just taking the chances and throwing the ball downfield. I feel like he might have been instructed to be more decisive with the football. I don't know that to be factual, guys. I'm not in the meeting room. I'm just judging the circumstances of what I saw there. And, and it definitely felt like he was forcing things. I mean, he's being decisive. It didn't work to his benefit, and it felt forced. And I don't know, guys. That's, that's what it felt like to me. That was very uncharacteristic of Jalen Hurts to, to turn the ball over that much through the air. He's normally fairly protective to the point of being frustrating of you're not taking chances when you should be. This was the inverse of it, man. I mean, it, it's growing. It's growing pains, guys. It's, it's what it is. If you're asking me if this guy will be the quarterback come 2022, I don't know. To begin with, guys, I have no say in that. I really, you know, it's, it's so far above what I can do. But in terms of the practicality of, of judging the position, guys, he does some things through the running game that make this team, you know, pretty dynamic. But from passing in the pocket, I think that the subsequent skill set is there. Like, he's got a really good arm. I don't think he's, like, top 10 or anything like that, guys. But he's got a nice, strong NFL arm. He doesn't read coverages very well yet. He's still very, very early in reading coverages. And, and we know Jalen Hurts has admitted that he just really wasn't groomed as a quarterback until he got to Oklahoma. So there's a lot to make up there. And I'm not going to give up on the young man yet. Personally, I'm not going to give up on him yet, but I'm certainly far more skeptical today than I was a couple weeks ago. Like, that was a really bad game. High receiver play. I know some of you guys feel like the front office – is instructing the coaching staff to target some of these guys. And, and there could be there could be an element of truth to that. I'm not saying that it's as nefarious as people are making it sound like how he's behind the scene in the dark room. I don't think that's what's happening. But, you know, the front office does have people that work in analytics. They do have scouts. They, do, they have people that do this kind of stuff, right? 
So they may have been saying, like, hey, guys, like, we've got to expand upon this passing game. We're not asking necessarily to go over 35 attempts on a routine basis with this particular offense, but we need to be more diverse in the targets and how they're actually, like, given out, right? How they're distributed amongst the, you know, the skill position players. You can't just be just Goddard and just Devontae Smith. And I, and I do think there was a concerted effort from the game plan to get the ball into Quez Watkins and Jalen Rager. It was both, guys. We, we tend to focus on Jalen Rager just how bad his play was. But there was a concerted effort to get the ball into Quez as well. You, you could definitely tell. But I think the other side of that has to do with the way the defense matched this up. I don't have the All-22 yet, guys, but from the little bit I could see from the TV copy, they were definitely playing physical with us. And... I, you know, it looked like to me that there were a few plays that it definitely seemed like there was bracket coverage on, on Goddard, and it definitely seemed like they were definitely getting up into Devontae's face, trying to do what Trayvon digs to him with Dallas and try to disrupt his route to throw that off, the timing off. So that kind of forced us into going to second, third reads, you know, quite considerably in this game. But there was also times where, where I'm going to be honest, just judging from the TV copy and, and watching Hurt's eyes, it did feel like Jalen Hurts really and honestly was locking on to reads and not coming off of those reads. So, I mean, it's a little bit of both, right? Like, you're trying to get them there, but there's clearly some element of game plan to where those are the primary reads, and it's, it's designed to get the ball to Quez or to get the ball to, to, to Rager. Now, to be fair, there could be two reads, and Jalen's ruling one read out right from the snap just because of the coverage that dictates it. That's something I can't determine until the All-22 comes out, guys. But nonetheless, I could definitely see that he was not looking off coverage. That is an issue. That's an issue of development there. Jalen Rager, man. I don't know what to say, guys. I made a video. I broke him down. I stand by with what I said about Jalen Rager. This is not an, an issue of athleticism with Jalen Rager. Uh, I don't know that his issue is the same as, as Nelson Aguilar. Uh, outside of tracking the football, he's... He's proving to be just as bad at tracking the ball at times as Nelson Aguilar. I don't know if this is anxiety riddle, but I will say that last drop in the game, that seemed like a play to where the ball hung a little bit and you got in your head and you dropped a give me. That definitely felt that way. So, I don't know, guys. I mean, my opinion with a guy like Jalen Rager in this situation, what's probably best for Jalen Rager and the team is to decrease decrease his snaps a little bit. I'm not saying you can't be so reactionary that you completely remove him from the from the offense, guys. Like, I'm sorry, we're not that talented to do that. But you definitely could give some of his reps to people like Kenneth Gainwell. You can give some of his reps to a guy like, at this point, J.J. Ortega Whiteside would probably deserve a little bit more at this point. Um, you could definitely bring a John Hightower up, right? You could definitely give, I think I said Quez, but Gainwell and Quez are the main two, then you know, maybe J.J. and maybe bring Hightower up. I think Hightower is a pretty good route runner. I just think that he he heard some footsteps last year and pulled up on some balls. But I think he's a really good route runner, and he can get separation in games. He's skinny a frame, just, just like Devontae is. But I think those are possibilities there. I, I mean, I think you can do something like that, and then I would define Jalen's role more, Jalen Rager's role more. I think he needs to be scaled back from the offense and then have his his – what he does for the offense needs to be way more defined. It, just in my opinion. It's, it's how I would handle it as a coach. The young man needs time to, to develop. And, and I know people are going to be mad because he's a first-round pick and this is his second year. And you got look, you're justified for being upset, guys. It was bad. But in saying that, guys, he can't help where he's picked. He has nothing to do with that. You can't fault Jalen Rager for where he's picked. With that said, this young man, is he's, he's not there yet, man. Something is going on with his ability to track the football, and he really struggles to beat man press coverage. Off coverage, he gets separation. He's really good at sinking his hips at the top of the route stem and, and gaining adequate separation from corners. Gain all the separation you want, guys. If you can't catch the ball, that's a problem. That's how I feel right now about that. Last thing I'll say, guys, is I did see a couple of reads that got missed. There was one in particular where I saw Dallas Goddard. He came open, and, and that read got missed. I don't know exactly what happened. Like I said, this is one of the things you need the All-22 to get the each little individual thing that's happening that causes some of this stuff. The read, the, the read was missed, though. I mean, that can't be disputed. I saw it. That, that read was missed to Dallas Goddard on one of them. Second one is the, the play to, to, to Rager. I think you could make an argument that you could have taken an opportunity there to get the ball to your top 10 pick. 
I can't tell the exact depth of the safety because it does seem like that safety is actually trailing and then comes back over towards the end of the, you know, the, the play. Then he kind of tails back off. Um, if you make that reading, you're decisive in that reading, you throw that ball, I'll be honest with you guys, from the TV copy, the broadcast copy, it looks like a play is there to be made. Now, that can change when I see the All-22 and I see the coverage and I see the pocket. You know, that's the other thing is I don't know exactly the pressure around Jalen's feet and what happened there. I'd, I'd have to see how that played out. And I, I need all 22 angles for this, guys. I need to see the route concepts. I need to see what the, the actual play design was and what is Jalen reading on the defense or what is he failing to read. You know, you can look at that from either perspective, guys. So with that said, it was disappointing. I was hoping we walked out of this game with a humbling win. You know, you just sneak by a team that you should have blown out and they, they rocked you a little bit and, and hung in a game that they shouldn't have been in because, you know, we didn't take them seriously enough. That's not ultimately how, it, you know, it, it shook out, man. They, they caught us. They caught us with one. Congratulations to the Giants, guys. I mean, you caught us with one, and, and there's no excuses here, guys. You, we were the better football team. Most of you Giant fans admitted that. Still beat us. Congrats. With that said, guys, on to the next week. I appreciate y'all so much, guys. I'll catch y'all in the next video.